Is the new M3 MacBook Pro worth it over the 13 inch MacBook Air with the M2 chip? Because right now you can buy this thing on Amazon for $1,050 compared to $1,600 on this M3 MacBook Pro. That's $550 more, which is a lot. So in this video, I'm gonna compare everything, including the specs, displays, the keyboards, connectivity, ports, performance, and more. And I promise by the end of this video, you're gonna know which one is more worth it to buy. Now, starting off, I do wanna mention that this M3 MacBook Pro now does come with a 512 gigabyte SSD compared to 256 gigs on the MacBook Air. Now, when we tore down this machine, we did notice that Apple is now putting two NAND chips finally, once again, compared to only one NAND chip on the MacBook Air, and that's gonna impact the performance of the SSD, which I'll show you in a minute. But first, let's get into comparing the actual designs. As you guys can see, we have the midnight color on the MacBook Air, which looks really cool, but you probably notice a bunch of these fingerprints, and I intentionally left this on because they're always there. In regular use, the fingerprints are always showing up against this dark blue finish, so I didn't want to clean it off and make it look perfect. This is what you're going to see compared to silver on the new M3 MacBook Pro, and you can see that the footprint is very similar, but this one is definitely a little bit bigger, as you can tell, on all sides, it sticks out just a little bit more, but it's not that big of a deal. Now, in terms of the thickness, that's where it gets crazy, because take a look at that side by side, you can see just how much thicker the MacBook Pro is compared to that MacBook Air. This thing feels amazing. It's so lightweight in your hands, it just feels almost impossible to pack this much performance and everything into such a thin laptop. Of course, this MacBook Pro is definitely heavier, but I think it's worth it for the performance, which you'll see in a minute. Now, in terms of the ports, the base MacBook Pro finally gets the new redesign, so it gets MagSafe 3, which is awesome. The same on the MacBook Air. You got two Thunderbolt ports, and the MacBook Pro gets the headphone jack here on the left side. Now, going over to the other side, the MacBook Air has the headphone jack on that side, while the MacBook Pro actually gets HDMI and an SD card slot, which is incredible. It's so convenient to have both of those ports, a big step up from the MacBook. Now, I know you're probably wondering about the 15 inch MacBook Air, so I have it right here, just to show you guys kind of the difference in footprint. So as you can see on that top cam, take a look at that. The 15 inch, definitely bigger, all the way around in terms of the footprint. And in terms of the thickness, the 15 inch is a little bit thicker than the 13, but still quite a lot thicker than that 14 inch MacBook Pro. And of course, on the inside, the MacBook Pro does get a single fan with a heat sink and heat pipe, while both of the MacBook Airs are fanless. And you're probably also wondering about the difference in screen size, so here you go. I set them all up, the 13 inch MacBook Air, you have a step up, to that 14 inch and then a pretty big step up for the 15 inch. This actually gets quite a bit bigger than you'd expect just going one more inch up. So here's the difference in the screen real estate. And other than that, there's really no differences between the 13 and 15 inch MacBook Air, so I'm gonna put this away. And now getting into the keyboards and the trackpads, they have basically the same keys, but the difference is the MacBook Pro does have the black kind of anodized metal behind it, which looks really cool and contrasts well with the silver, while this kind of looks similar with the midnight and the black. Now, you might notice that the MacBook Pro has speaker grills right here, so they fire up. Compared to the MacBook Air that does not, it actually fires through this hinge and reflects back. Now, actually, on the MacBook Pro, you do have these little vents, which are for the down firing woofers. So this should sound quite nice. So let's actually compare the speakers right now. And by the way, the track pads are basically identical. But first, our sponsor Software Keep is having a massive 1111 day sale on genuine Microsoft software and all combos like Home Office for Mac plus PDF Reader Pro. They've got over 100,000 five star reviews and great 24 7, 365 customer support. So use the links in the description below with coupon code MXTech25 for 25% off site wide. Oh, 
folks, guys, did you just hear that? This thing, as soon as it turned on, I was blown away. Once again, even though I've heard this many times, wow, it is just so much better in every single way. This thing is basically all about mids and highs. The bass is gone. The separation of frequencies, the sound stage is gone. This, compared to that, is just absolutely amazing. And now let's get into the display quality comparison. As you can see, they both have the same sized notch, but it does look a little bit smaller on the 14 inch just because the screen is bigger. But in terms of quality, there is a huge difference because this year, the base MacBook Pro finally adopts the high-end mini LED display from the more expensive machine. So you have up to 1600 nits of brightness for HDR content, which looks absolutely amazing compared to the regular LCD panel on the MacBook Air that's limited to 500 at all times. And the bonus with this new machine is that they've set the standard brightness to 600 nits, so it's a little bit brighter for all situations, not just the HDR. And another huge benefit for the MacBook Pro is that it has ProMotion 120 Hertz display refresh rate tech that can go between 24 and 120 based on what you're viewing. Like if you're watching a 24 Hertz movie, then it's gonna go down to that and save battery life. While the MacBook Air is always limited to 60, it can't go down, can't go up, and that kind of sucks, especially for gaming, which is why I always choose the ProMotion displays. And now let's get into the webcams and the microphones. This is the 1080p webcam on the MacBook Air. So let's see how it sounds and compares. And then this is on the M3 MacBook Pro. Let me know if you hear any differences in the microphones or if you see any differences on the camera. I almost maybe even see a little bit more noise in my face, but you let me know down in the comment section below. And now let's get right into the performance comparison, starting with Geekbench 6, which is a very simple benchmark, which gives you the general performance of both machines. First of all, we do have eight gigs of RAM based on both of these. And I do wanna mention that eight gigs is probably not enough if you actually do care about performance and you do productivity work at least once a week. In that case, you probably want 16. And we proved it in this video right there, which you can definitely watch after this one ends, a really big deal between the eight and 16. But getting back to this, we have the M2 on this MacBook Air that goes up to 3.48 gigahertz, while the M3 goes up to 4.05. So let's run a CPU benchmark. For single core performance, the M3 is about 19% faster. And for multi-core, the M3 is about 21.5% faster. Moving on to the graphics side of performance, the M2 chip comes binned with an 8-core GPU, while the M3 has a 10-core. And it looks like the M3 with the 10-core is about 22% faster in raw graphics performance. And now to test out the real-world performance of web browsing and web-based apps, I have this project in Figma from our favorite design studio, 500 Designs, based out of California who makes great websites. And the first test I'm gonna do is basically rapidly zooming in and seeing how long it takes to kind of load up this image. There you go, it just loaded. And now let's do the same over on this one. And it looks like, wait, it's almost like it already loaded much more quickly. That's interesting. And now the second part of this test is to actually export 12 of these different web pages or layers at four times resolution PNGs. So let's test this out and see which one finishes first. And it looks like the M3 MacBook Pro finished in a minute and 36 seconds compared to a minute and 52 on the MacBook Air. So realistically, it is faster, but it's not a game changer unless you're doing this all day. And I almost forgot that we've got to test and compare the SSD transfer speed. So I have Blackmagic Design Speed Test. Let's run it. We have 256 gig here compared to 512. Wow. In terms of the read speed, the M3 MacBook Pro with the 512 is almost twice as fast and write speed is over twice as fast. The main reason for this is the single NAND on the MacBook Air that's basically losing half of the channels because that slot is empty while the MacBook Pro is populating both NAND chips and increasing the speed. And now let's actually do a gaming benchmark. This is 3D Marks Wildlife Extreme Unlimited. This is gonna show you the real world gaming performance of each machine. Wow, the M3 is 41% 
faster in terms of FPS, even though the actual raw graphics difference wasn't that big in Geekbench, it's probably because there's extra GPU features that this is utilizing, so this is a huge boost for gaming performance. And now I'm really excited to test out the thermal throttling because this thing does not have a fan while the M3 MacBook Pro does, but first, I wanna do a couple of very fun tests that you guys have been requesting. Music production with Logic Pro right here, and of course, Xcode right after this. So this is basically a stress test seeing the maximum load in terms of tracks that the CPU can handle before overloading. So let's go ahead and see how much we can do. All right, I just did some testing and it looks like we've landed on these scores right here. The MacBook Air can run 80 tracks at the same time without overloading, while the MacBook Pro with the M3 can do 116. So definitely a nice improvement from the M2 to the M3. And now we have the Xcode benchmark created for us by Maxim Aramenko. And I do wanna mention that Xcode 15 is new, so he had to completely redesign the entire test, make it harder, so all of the old scores are no longer compatible. So let's test it out. And there you go, it's done. It looks like it took 142 seconds to finish on the M3 MacBook Pro, compared to 176 on the Air, so you are getting a a nice improvement for programming, especially if you're doing it every day. This is definitely the better option. And now we have Cinebench. This is the 2024 version, which is a lot tougher on these systems. I'm gonna be running a 10 minute stress test and looking at the wattages and everything to see how much thermal throttling there is. I've just started both of them and as you can see, the power spiked on both, I think that hit 20 watts. This thing is now ramping up. We can instantly see that the air is limited to 3.2 gigahertz clock speed for the P-Core, while this is going at 3.64. That's a huge, huge increase. Already we can see the MacBook Air at 101, 104 degrees Celsius right there is the hottest core looking over at the MacBook Pro. It's still under 100 right now and 108. That is the actual maximum limit that Apple will allow these chips to hit before it throttles down the power to basically thermal throttle officially. Yes, it's thermal throttling right now because you can see those cores are slowing down right there, no longer maxed out at 3.2. And right away, take a look at the power. The power is coming down from 20, now it's 17. It's throttling the wattage. Well, look at that, the M3 is still going strong at about 19, 20 watts, no problems at all. And oh my goodness, the MacBook Air keeps throttling. Down to 3.0 gigahertz, about to go under. There you go, just went under, it's throttling like crazy. And of course, over here, we can see that the fans are ramping up about halfway compared to the maximum 6,800 RPMs. The fans are kicking in, now the temps are in check, staying lower than the MacBook Air, 101 degrees Celsius, still hot, but it's pushing it to the limit. It's been about five minutes, and man, this MacBook Air keeps clocking down almost 13 watts of package power, so I wanna actually test the temperatures of the surfaces of these laptops to see what is going on. Look at that, we're looking at 44 degrees Celsius on the MacBook Air, you just have a big hot spot right there, no fans, so it has to contain the heat through the basic thermal transfer of the heat sink or whatever's going on. Compared to the MacBook Pro, look at that, the hot spot is only 34 degrees Celsius. Holy moly, that's a massive difference. 10 degrees Celsius difference, and look at that. It's actually a lot hotter right there where the single fan is pushing out through the hinge area up to 40 degrees. This thing is getting rid of heat. This is what it's supposed to do. It's keeping the chassis nice and cold compared to dang, look at that. The test is done and holy moly, the M3 MacBook Pro is 45% faster than the M2. That's due to all of the thermal throttling because in Geekbench it was only about 21.5% faster in multi-core. Now it's 45 because of that fan. And now let's get into testing photo editing with Lightroom Classic. We're gonna export 
50 raw 42 megapixel photos. And bam, the M3 MacBook Pro finished in a minute and 47 seconds compared to two minutes and 22 seconds on the MacBook Air. That's likely because of that NAND chip that's limiting the swap performance because this test relies a lot on the RAM and if you max out the eight gigs, it's gonna use the swap and it's slower when you only have one NAND chip. And now getting into basic video editing with Final Cut Pro. This is a five minute 4K HEVC project, which is by far the most common format that most people are going to be editing. So let's see if there's any differences in terms of exporting performance because they both play back just fine, 24 FPS, no issues at all. The export is done and it looks like they're almost exactly the same. Two minutes, 20 seconds for the M3, 221 for the M2 MacBook Air. And that's because they essentially have the same encoders as before for HEVC. So there's no difference for common basic 4K editing. Unless you're gonna be adding tons of effects, then the M3 will probably pull the lead. And now let's get into Blender 3D rendering. This is the Party Tug project. And I wanna start off with just a simple render image using the EV engine, which is actually supporting ray tracing on these machines. At least the M3 is what I mean, because this is the Blender 4.0 beta. And there you go, seven and a half seconds for the M3 compared to 11 and a half on the M2. That might not seem like a big difference, but when you have massive projects, that is gonna be saving you a lot of time. And there you guys go, that was a lot of performance testing and testing in general. So let's answer the original question of if it's worth spending $550 more for the M3 MacBook Pro. Well, first of all, I do wanna check the battery life because I started both of these at 100% battery on each. We have 76 on the MacBook Air, which is good, and whoa, 79% on the MacBook Pro. Now, in terms of the general design, the features, the MacBook Pro is definitely a winner. Even though it's thicker, slightly bigger, those extra ports, the extra connectivity, is just so much better. The display, the speakers, the overall package is definitely a win, especially performance if you're actually doing productivity work or giving a big workload, which the fan is gonna help you out a lot. It's definitely worth it, but here is my honest opinion. If you're a casual user that mostly just browses the web, you mostly just do business related work, school work, homework, studying, that kind of thing with occasionally a video edit or a photo edit, you're gonna be just fine with this MacBook Air, especially saving $550. I definitely recommend this thing for the price. Now, if you do care about performance and you do care about all of the new design, the features, the ports, the display features like ProMotion and the performance and everything else, then this thing is a win, even if you have to spend that much more money, especially if you're buying it for business with a tax write-off. If you've got 1600 to spend, definitely buy this over the MacBook Air. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, subscribe above and check out that eight gig versus 16 gig RAM comparison video right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.